Welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, in this video, we're going to go over the function and physiology of complex 3 in the mitochondria respiratory chain. This enzyme has several names that you may have heard of. Probably the more common name is cytochrome C reductase, given the fact that it actually reduces cytochrome C using electrons from ubiquinol. Um, it's also called cytochrome BC1. Um, there's some other names such as cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase, or just call it complex 3. This enzyme right here probably has the more, I would say, uh, complicated mechanism in terms of the pathway of electrons, but we'll hopefully try to decipher that. Now, we're going to show this ultimately in two stages. So here's step one on the left and step two on the right. Complex 3, hopefully as we know, is going to take the electrons from ubiquinol that we previously produced in complexes 1 and 2. So this QH2 shown right here, this is the ubiquinol. Okay? And in order to take the electrons from ubiquinol and reduce cytochrome C, um, ultimately you're going to have to use something called a Q cycle. And this is fairly complicated, but let's hopefully go ahead and try to uh, decipher it. So the ubiquinol right here is going to come into sort of an active site of cytochrome C reductase. Now ubiquinol, as we talked about um, in another video where we discussed the coenzymes of the mitochondria, ubiquinol is very hydrophobic. And so notice how it's in the membrane. Ubiquinol is one of the only cofactors that we're going to see that actually moves through the membrane. It's actually not soluble in the matrix or inner membrane space. It moves through the membrane. That's why you see it here moving through the membrane. And it's going to come into sort of an active site here in cytochrome C reductase. Now, ubiquinol has two electrons that it's able to give up. Okay? It only has two. However, when it gives up those electrons, one of them is going to go directly to cytochrome C. That's this one you see on the top. And then one of them is going to be siphoned off for another purpose. But let's first look at the one that goes to cytochrome C up here. One of the electrons is going to go to this. This thing right here, this, these red and yellow circles, that's an iron sulfur center. And then ultimately, those electrons are going to go to a heme, or a, excuse me, a cytochrome C1, which is different than cytochrome C technically. And then the electrons go to cytochrome C. A cytochrome C, um, in fact, all of these little diamonds right here, these red diamonds, those are hemes. In fact, the electron that travels from ubiquinol to cytochrome C is actually going to be contained in the heme moiety of cytochrome C. And cytochrome C is going to be a soluble protein, so it doesn't have to exist in the membrane. It's actually going to go over here in the fluid, and it's actually going to go to cytochrome C oxidase, okay? And deliver that electron to cytochrome C oxidase. That's the first electron. The second electron from ubiquinol is going to take a slightly different path. It turns out there's another active site over here on cytochrome C reductase that actually has an oxidized ubiquinone. Ubiquinone is the oxidized version that doesn't yet have electrons. It turns out this electron is initially going to go to a low potential heme, and then to a high potential heme, and then ultimately it's going to go towards the uh, oxidized ubiquinone. Now, once this oxidized ubiquinone gets an electron, you see this QH and this radical electron. That radical electron simply means that it's the semiquinone, okay? It needs one more electron to become ubiquinol, totally reduced, okay? Now, the odd thing about cytochrome C reductase is we're actually going to have to use a second reduced ubiquinol from complexes 1 and 2, okay? So the second ubiquinol comes into the active site, all right, and again is going to give up two electrons, and they're going to take an, an identical path to what we saw. The first electron, as we saw, is going to go to an iron sulfur center, and then to cytochrome C1, and then to cytochrome C, and as we talked about, the electron goes into the heme moiety of the cytochrome C. Then this cytochrome C dissociates, it's soluble, it goes to cytochrome C oxidase and delivers that electron, okay? The other electron is going to take the other path that we saw before. It's going to go to the low potential heme, to then to the high potential heme, and then to this semiquinone, or this UB semiquinone, and that's going to totally reduce it to ubiquinol. How many ubiquinols did we put in to this enzyme? We actually put in two, which you might think is unintuitive because then it seems like, well, we just, why did we end up sending an electron this way? Okay. 
Why did we have to split the two electrons? Well, the reason we have to split the two electrons is because it turns out that cytochrome C can only accept one electron at a time. If we sent both of the electrons this way, that wouldn't work because cytochrome C, because of the nature of the electron acceptor, the heme, it can only accept one electron, it cannot accept two. So we actually have to siphon one electron another way through another path to an oxidized ubiquinone. But the benefit of doing that is that if we put in the two ubiquinols, by siphoning off two electrons, we can actually generate another ubiquinol from a ubiquinone that's already in, the, in an, another active site. So the ultimate result is even though we put in two ubiquinols, we get one back. Okay, So this is the ubiquinol that was regenerated, and it can actually react over here in the other active site in another reaction of cytochrome C reductase. Okay, So overall, the net ubiquinol used is only one. Okay, and could be because, because we regenerate another one. So it's just sort of a simple analogy, sort of like the Native Americans. They ate bison. They used every part of the bison. They ate the flesh for food. They used the fur for uh, warmth and protection. And then they also used the bladder for um, things like a thermos, basically. They used everything. That's the same concept here. This enzyme is a great example. Okay? Another thing that's important about this enzyme is it's also going to result in the net pumping of four protons from the matrix down here into the inner membrane space. Okay? So just like complex one, it's going to pump four protons. This is the only other one that pumps four protons. The one we're going to see in the next video, cytochrome C oxidase, is only going to pump two protons. But remember, this complex number three pumps four protons, okay, from the matrix down here into the inner membrane space. All right, and just remember the overall net reaction of this is we get electrons from ubiquinol, coenzyme Q, to cytochrome C, which is going to go to cytochrome C oxidase. So join us in the next video where we talk about the reaction of cytochrome C oxidase. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe.